Hi, this week uh, I'm going to be judging The Seller by Natasha Preston. So, for this book, there's going to be a trigger warning for rape, sexual assault, murder, gore, and kidnapping. A lot of stuff happens in this book, so be forewarned. If you watched my Shatter Me review, uh, I didn't mention it, but there is a quiz in the description below. I will also put it in the description down here. Um, please take the quiz. It really helped me with my project and um, bettering my channel. This book features our main protagonist, Summer, who is 16 years old and lives in, wait for it, the quiet, boring town of Long Thorpe. It's the stupidest name. One day, she gets kidnapped by a sociopathic man that calls himself Clover. He takes her to his cellar, <laughs> cellar, which is eerily clean and comfortable, and it houses three other girls. He calls them Violet, Rose, and Poppy, and he keeps telling Summer that her name is Lily. Clover clearly believes that these perfect, pure flowers are his twisted sort of a family. Summer now has to survive living with this sociopath um, and hope and pray that the police and her boyfriend find her soon. We will now be jumping into the non-spoiler section of this video. In conclusion, it sucked. The writing was awful. It was just painful to read. You can see, I tried not to judge, but I was like, okay, it's from Wattpad. Okay, we're gonna give this book a shot and it did not deserve that shot. I read this book a while ago, and when I was very young, I liked this book when I was younger, and I read it again, and how utterly wrong I've been. The writing is very clearly from Wattpad. It is horrible and painful to read. The dialogue is so stiff and lifeless. It feels, it's like, it's, it's, Ooh. She also does this thing where she'll tell you exactly what the relationships are and she won't like show you what the relationships are so she'll be like this brother and sister they're bickering but they're really good siblings and she'll just tell you that instead of showing you that and like actually characterizing those people and portraying those relationships she'll just tell you and think it's enough and then she'll repeat that over and over and over again so you'll hear they're bickering but they're great siblings like five times throughout the whole book just like imagine the kissing booth but grimmer imagine if l got kidnapped and that's that's what this is and the dialogue oh the dialogue oh it's so bad imagine one of those really bad movies with those like teenage actors who, not judging, but they're not good actors, and they just, they deliver their lines with such utter apathy, and they're just like, my mom is dead. <laughs> Boo hoo. That's what everyone talks like in this. It's the worst. So the characters were awful. They could be replaced with lamps and the story would be the same. Summer, oh Summer, she ranges from almost bearable to just utterly excruciating. I hate her so much. In the basement, when you are kidnapped, you are only allowed to have two personality traits. You can either want to escape or you don't want to escape, and that is it. However, Summer brings an interesting spice into this conversation because she also misses her boyfriend. She just misses her boyfriend and wants to escape, and that's it. Lewis is her boyfriend. He is low-key problematic, needs to learn boundaries, which is apparently a theme with YA male love interests. <clears throat> the other girls in the basement were probably old shoes and I just didn't notice because they're so boring. Clover was fine. I will go into more depth with him in the spoiler section. Overall, it was bad. I would not recommend this book for you. I gave it, I think, one out of five stars. I couldn't find the heart to give it any more 
I was like, I don't want to be so mean because I've the past reviews have been kind of like iffy. I can't bring myself to be nice to this book. I just can't. So you can just see the amount of complaints that I had. Just it had so much potential. So much. And it just it didn't it didn't deliver. So we will now be entering the spoiler section of this video. So if you do not want to be spoiled and you are somehow still planning on reading this book, click away now. As I have previously mentioned, the writing was absolutely terrible. Within the first couple of pages, she has her Wattpad moment of, oh, I'm so boringly pretty. My bright green eyes clash with my honey blonde hair. I'm just too conventionally attractive. My good thing my boyfriend is blind. Oh, like, do you want to hear what she actually says? Apparently the most attractive thing was confidence, but what did you do if you weren't confident? The ultimate dilemma in anyone's life. That couldn't be faked without being obvious. I wasn't model pretty or playboy sexy. You know, the go-to analogy. And I didn't have bucket loads of confidence. Basically, I was screwed and downright lucky that Lu Lewis was so blind. There's just such weird moments in the dialogue that I'm like, why? What? She goes, Lewis, I've been walking around on my own for years. I used to walk to and from school every day, and I will you do it again next year. These, I slapped my legs for emphasis, work perfectly fine. <laughs> uh. Like I said before, she just tells us like what the relationships are and doesn't actually show it. Or if she does show it, she shows it badly and then she tells us what it means. And it's like, we can figure it out. For example, she has this entire dialogue that by the way is, is bad, it's not good, but it, it works because it shows that Summer and her brother have like that bickering relationship of siblings, right? Literally in the next paragraph, she's like, we get along sometimes and he was the best big brother I could ask for. He drove me crazy. I had no doubt we would bicker until we died. Like, you did not need to say that. We got that. Also, she'll put these weird descriptions in between dialogue. For example, her friend Carrie surprises her or whatever because I think they're at a Halloween party and she's like, sorry, have you seen Rachel? My heart slowed to its normal pace as my brain processed my friend's face and not the face of the scream dude or Freddy Krueger. Not seen anyone, just got here. Yeah, so she's getting kidnapped, which is a traumatic situation, right? Are you ready to hear what she said? Because it's shook me to my core. It was close enough that I could see the satisfied grin on his face and neat hair not affected by the wind. How much hairspray must he have used? If I weren't freaked out, I would have asked what product to use because my hair never played fair. This is in the first seven pages. So then she gets kidnapped and she goes into Clover's basement. So Violet speaks up against Clover, which was just kind of weird to me. It was just kind of forced, I feel like. She was squeezing all the drama she could get after, out of this one moment and that just kind of weirded me out. Apparently, it's mentioned that Summer's voicemail tells everyone to leave a message. And if you were Channing Tatum, yes, she would marry you. So quirky. Lewis calls her baby all the time and every time he does, I die a little inside. He calls her mom by her first name, like his girlfriend's mom. He calls her Dawn. Here it is. If the Wattpad has not jumped out yet, this is where it does. This is a backstory, I think. I hated the backstories. They were the worst part and this book was bad. I liked Lewis forever and recently he'd been looking at me differently. Well, he seemed to be anyways. I just hoped it wasn't all in my head, which I was almost 100% sure it was. His light green eyes sparkled and I melted. They really stood out against his dark, almost black hair. He cocked his head to the side. What can I do for you? You could kiss me, she thought. One of my biggest complaints is that the plot just stops here. Like it screeches to a halt. All that happens during this time is Clover kills some prostitutes, Summer is sad, and so is Lewis and his and her family. That's all that happens through this book. They lose a violet. They didn't do anything to anything. It was just kind of meh. The whole book is just them in the basement. They're just in the basement. It would have been so much cooler if 
both Lewis and Summer were adults and they were like detectives or something. Lewis could actually be doing interest, doing something interesting instead of just being like, oh, I guess I'll search this field again. Oh my God. I was so sick of reading him just be so like, he could have been the one to question Clover and noticed something was wrong. And then like, instead of just him being, I think something's weird with that guy. Based on like the two times I've talked to him. I'm gonna break into his house. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, let's do that. His side of the story would have been an awesome mystery novel sort of a thing where he had to solve this like case, right? But he's invested in it because his girlfriend is kidnapped. And maybe in the end, Summer escapes with herself in like some super elaborate, awesome heist. Like, beca and because she's a detective, she leaves like subtle clues that only Lewis would know about so he can track them. These clues have something to do maybe with like some romantic backstory or inside joke that they've got. That would have been so cool. I feel like Clover should have kept them farther away or like moved them around at points. That would have been so cool because they're just in the basement. That's that's all they are. It's so boring when you're just in the freaking basement over and over and over again. Maybe he ran a flower shop. If he ran a flower shop, how cool would that be? He kidnaps people and the girls have to run the flower shop and Rose, who acts as sort of like a mini antagonist in this, she could have been the one to be like on his side and like keeping an eye on things as they run the flower shop. It would also be so cool if the reader didn't know who Clover was. It would make sense why he was calling himself Clover because that was never explained. Why is he calling himself Clover instead of Colin? If he called himself Clover, we wouldn't know what name of the killer was. And we could be vague with descriptions too so you don't really know. And we could spend Lewis's chapters gathering clues as to who the kidnapper is instead of just being like, oh my god, he's right there, you idiot. And some... Summer's chapters would have a few clues for the reader as to who it was. She could be leaving clues and it would be like this awesome twist instead of just this kind of like bleh. The entire scene where Lewis and Summer kissed is the worst writing and I hated myself throughout it all. Here are some of the tabs I have. I hate this book. I hate myself. I hate myself for reading this. Why am I like this? Also, Lewis sounds literally like the worst boyfriend in the world. I had watched The Notebook with Lewis. He complained through the whole thing. If there weren't any cars, fights, or nudity, he wasn't really that interested. Ew. What kind of a boyfriend is that? And she mentions later, like, sometimes dating Lewis so much like babysitting. That's not how relationships work, girl. Get a new boyfriend. I'm repeating this, but I don't care because it annoyed me so much. She will do something. She'll be like, Dawn was by the phone in case Summer called. And then it'll be repeated over and over again. And so the next time we see Dawn, it'll be explained why she's by the phone because she's waiting for Summer. And then the next time we see her, she's waiting by the phone because she's waiting for Summer to call every single time. In the point of views of Clover, he's so interesting. He's such a cool villain. But then as soon as you're out of his point of view, you're supposed to believe he's on edge. And sometimes he shows it, but I feel like he should lash out a little bit more. Just to really send that point home and to get the most out of his character. I feel like he is inconsistent on purpose because he is a sociopath. I looked up that word, that's the correct word. I'm great. But he's inconsistently inconsistent. When Lewis goes to look for Summer, why are there paparazzi outside of his house chanting Lewis? Like they're like, Lewis, Lewis, like, no one cares that much. I don't care that much. And I'm reading this. They're talking about how he's really obsessed with keeping everything clean and stuff. And she goes, everything is sitting on the shelves under the stairs and look the same distance apart. Did he go as far as measuring how far apart they needed to be? Surely no one was that OCD. Yeah. So now I guess we're downplaying mental illness then. I see. Also, there was a typo on page 168 because on this page at the very bottom, it says, I wanted to her to appear. I needed her. And then on the next page at the very top, it just says spotted her. How did that get past the editing? Oh my God. I'm not, I'm not even gonna talk about the backstory in chapter 18. That was disgraceful. I wish I could burn my eyeballs. The plot does not exist in this book. Where is the plot? Because I'm not seeing it. Nothing happens from when she gets kidnapped until when she is rescued. Nothing. It is the same. There were murders, but nothing changed. After those murders, there was no building toward a big conflict or a big climax or anything. I think Clover's point of views were my favorites, but they weren't good. I'm just, I was, I hated, hated Lewis's point of view. A, because I hate him. Second, because they were just so 
boring. The relationship of Lewis and Summer is just so terrible. She's trying to wake him up because she's throwing like this birthday party for him because she's awesome. She's not that awesome, I hate her. And she's like, oh, I wanna sleep. She like takes her shirt off to get him out of bed. And it's like, oh no, oh no. Lewis just, I, I hate him so much. Lewis just conveniently is really confident in his hunch about Colin. Incredibly convenient. Lewis also punches the guy he thinks kidnapped Summer, which was so annoying. And it was like, really? Also, doesn't he have school or something? Why does this man have so much time to search empty fields and forests and crap? Like, don't you have like homework? This climax when they finally find them or whatever, it's so boring because the most lead up we've had to this is they're just like, Clover's getting more agitated. Clover's getting more agitated. I'm scared, he's acting weirder than he normally does. And it's like, what does that mean? What, is, what do you think he's gonna do? What is this leading up to? Because we've had an entire book where she's been like, oh my gosh, I have to escape. Oh my gosh, I have to escape. Oh my gosh, I have to escape. Why don't these two wanna escape? I just wanna escape. No, 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 no. And then they don't escape. They have to be rescued. And so it was leading up to this big escape and it didn't even lead up to an escape. We were like, oh, he's getting agitated, blah, 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 whatever. And then he stabs a couple of them and then they get out. It happens within like two pages. It would have been so much better if it had been drawn out and like he'd had to chase her out, he'd had to chase them out. Maybe Rose would have joined because Rose, as we know, is on Clover's side. And it would have been better if it hadn't been so abrupt because we're suddenly concerned. Oh no, are they gonna get stabbed? Oh no, they're rescued, it's fine. Your concern is immediately alleviated by the rescue. Also the reunion between Summer and Lewis is some of the crappiest writing ever. Oh my gosh, I understand that it's a little awkward on purpose just to illustrate how different Summer is now, but like they just sit there. He's like, hey you, and she's like, hi. Give her a hug, man. It was really annoying to me. Poppy and Henry have grown close. Like, yeah, let's pair her off too, I guess. Oh my God, I hated that so much because it's supposed to represent this dream she's had of like having a husband and being like a housewife and stuff. And like, I get that. But the thing is the narrative of romance is so laid thick in this book and I'm sick of it. Cause she talks about wanting to live in like this cottage with a pretty garden and a vegetable patch. I would rather see her looking at cottages with ivy growing on them with like garden patches and whatever. And I want her to talk to Summer like, oh, I want my family holiday to be like this man I want to do this with my family because that would show that she has hope for the future without having to give her a needless romance I would rather see her talk to Summer about her dreams and about her future to show that she thinks that she actually has a future because back in the cellar she's like it's never gonna happen though like I'm just doing it to distract myself and it's like that would be such a cool character moment and character growth where she's like I actually have a future Violet was just so unnecessary the first one was just there to set the stakes, and the second one was there to give Summer a friend. And that was it. That was my review on The Settler. One out of five stars, fun times, I guess. I hated all the characters, I hated the plot that was not there, I hated the writing, I hated everything. So that is my book review. Thank you so much for watching. Again, please take the survey in the description of Shatter Me and also in the description down below. I'll see you guys next week. Bye! First off, he calls her- oh, hold on, we will talk about this later. <laughs> I, don't have, I don't have the storage for this, Ella. Ew, get your foot out of my face. Ella, stop it. Stop it. I told me. <laughs> so, as I've previously- as I'm- <laughs> Okay, look, I was going to do a really good book this week, but the library was not working with me. This is the book we got, and I'm sorry that there's a third bad review I've given out, but that's my life right now, okay?
He's like Lewis from H2O. Uh, H2O. The crusty one. H2O Lewis was the crustiest man I've ever seen. Ugh.